Well, California is a big user. Uh, we have a big demand for products and fuels uh, come from fossil fuels. And the governor of California, Governor Newsom, continues to decrease in-state oil production. And as a result, we have a supply-demand problem. The supply, he keeps decreasing, but the citizens of California and the citizens of the country keep wanting more and more products that are made from oil and fuels that are made from oil that power the planes and the trains and the ships. And so we have a supply-demand problem. And the supply of oil in California, back in 1973, California was 95% independent between California oil production, which was huge, and Alaska oil production, that provided 95% of the oil demand needs of the state. And we were dependent on foreign countries for 5%. 50 years have gone by, and every governor preceding Governor Newsom keeps wanting to produce, reduce in-state oil production. Well, on one hand, they've been successful. They have been reducing it. The bad news is, instead of being 5% dependent on foreign oil, we're now more than 60% dependent on foreign oil. We're the fourth largest economy in the world. We have nine international airports in California, 41 military airports, three of the largest shipping ports in the country, and they're basically all being run by foreign oil. And he basically keeps saying, well, oil companies are gouging us. Well. Does he want to tax foreign countries? Because oil, the price of oil is set at the international level. And if he thinks the international level is gouging us, he's going to have to tax all the countries where the oil is coming from. And that is a, a sad situation for, for the state. You know, in addition, he's reducing oil production, and that has been a big revenue generator for many cities. Long Beach, which is relatively close, has a lot of oil production, and they're expecting oil production to go down, down, down. And that's a lot of revenue lost, and they're going to be facing a huge deficit. And to make up that deficit in a short period of time to bring in businesses and et cetera, et cetera, that's going to be a real pressure point for, for Long Beach, losing all that revenue. Well, California wants to go green, and they have, uh, I think we have the cleanest air in the world. And it's interesting, we have the cleanest air in the world because we like to, I use the word leakage. We leak responsibility to make products somewhere else that don't have environmental controls, don't have labor controls. So the emissions are actually greater to satisfy the products we need because they're made in locations that are emitting more emissions. And I always joke that Governor Newsom only breathes California air. Anything outside the borders of California, he doesn't breathe that. And so it, it's interesting that all the environmental laws are being imposed, the, the average citizen sees it at the gas pump. The posted price of the gas pump, I use the term, is a dumping ground. All the environmental costs and fees are just dumped into the price of the gasoline. And today, when you look at the price of gasoline, it's about 70% of it is Governor Newsom. You have you know, all the taxes and fees and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we're paying for the high-speed rail. It's all part of the posted price of the pump. And with that, about 30% is the cost of oil, which is set internationally. And then you have refinery you know, cost to make it and the marketing aspects. So 30% is really related to oil and the oil companies and 70% is basically Governor Newsom. To give you an example, in Northern California, there's two very large refineries, Chevron and Marathon, and the Air Quality Management District wanted them to reduce their particular emissions to clean up the air. This was, uh, I think, a year and a half ago, and to do so, it would have cost Chevron and Marathon each in excess of a billion dollars. And both says, no, we're out of here. We're closing down. So it went into court. And ironically, it just got settled about six weeks ago in the middle of February. The AQMD, they've been talking to Chevron and talking to Marathon, and they've come to an agreement 
that each, instead of each spending a billion dollars, they're going to clean up the particular emissions out of the refinery, not to the extent the AQMD wanted, but to a level that the AQMD is accepted. And so it's only going to cost Chevron and Marathon in excess of $100 million each instead of a billion dollars each because they want to stay here in California and provide all the airports and militaries and et cetera, you know, fuel and the products of the citizens. And one of the agreements is the cost, which only is in California, is like everything else, is going to be dumped onto the price of fuel in Northern California. So the price in Northern California will go up like a couple cents to help cover the $100 million expense that the AQMD is forcing on industry. Everybody has, I say everybody, you know, from Governor Newsom to President Biden, or the understanding that wind and solar can replace fossil fuels. But wind and solar can't replace fossil fuels. They do something totally different. Wind and solar generates electricity. They make no products for society. Oil and, well, let's take a look at the fossil fuels. You've got coal, natural gas, and oil. Coal and natural gas is heavily used for generation of electricity. Oil is never used for generation of electricity. In fact, oil is black tar. It's useless unless you can manufacture it into something usable. Well, over the years, over the last 200 years, we've been able to break down this cruddy crude oil into oil derivatives that makes all the products in our society, from tires and asphalt to defibrillators to iPhones, you name it. You, you go to your house, your office, uh, the hospital, trying to identify something, something that was not made with fossil fuels. And that's the difference because wind and solar can't make tires, can't make defibrillators. They can only make electricity. And where oil is making all the products, we're a, a materialistic society. We demand products, we demand fuels. As you know, the airports are getting bigger, the planes are getting bigger. The ships are getting bigger, and it's getting more frequent, and you, know, you can fly anywhere at any time and that type of thing, which is nice and convenient, but oil is basically making the planes, and oil is making the ships, and besides powering the ships. And we have a situation that our materialistic society is being led by our fearless leaders that don't understand the word energy. They talk about wind and solar energy and fossil fuel energy. To make it simple, it should be wind and solar electricity and fossil fuel products because we're a product-driven society. And then you have the situation that if you get rid of oil, you get rid of wind and solar. Let me explain. The light bulb came after oil because the light bulb was made from oil. And all the electrical generations we have, from coal, natural gas, hydro, nuclear, and now we have wind and solar. The other four provide continuous, uninterrupted all electricity to, to operate data centers and computers and the military. Wind and solar provide occasional electricity. When the weather's cooperating, the wind's blowing, the sun's shining, they provide electricity. If you're on the operating table, you don't want the lights to go out. <laughs> And so we have the situation, you got six ways of generating electricity, and every way of generating electricity cannot exist without crude oil, because crude oil is one that makes the insulation, makes the generators, makes all the computers, makes all the parts and components for it to generate electricity. So if the world wants to get rid of oil, we're going to get rid of wind and solar and nuclear, hydro's not going to work anymore. It, it, it all goes away. The EV, 100% made with oil, from the tires and the computers and the insulation, it's 100% made with oil. And like I say, we're a materialistic society. And that's the thing that our fearless leaders do not recognize. And it's a supply-demand situation, the demand of the public. You know, the other thing, the wealthy countries are the ones that are really going green. The developing countries aren't. Because of the 8 billion people on this planet, more than 80 percent, that's a big number, that's more than 6 billion people, they're living on less than $10 a day. 
They can't subsidize themselves out of a paper bag. But the countries that are going green, going green at any cost, and we obviously see it in the inflation on everything. The world leaders will not enter into discussions because, you know, there's no silver bullet answer to solve the needs of the world. You know, the world populated from one billion in, in the 1800s, in less than 200 years, we were eight billion people. Not because of oil, because of the products. We have hospitals, we have communications, we got, you know, electronics, we got tires, we got asphalt, we got roads. And that didn't exist 200 years ago. And that's the, the thing that they don't understand. And, you know, the idea electric is going to save the world. Well, wait a minute. I mean, take a look at the EV, the battery, the Tesla battery. It's a big battery. It weighs 1,200 pounds. And it's primarily made with a lot of lithium and cobalt, which comes from developing countries. And these developing countries have no environmental controls, no labor controls. They're exploiting people that have yellow, brown, and black skin that are mining for this lithium and cobalt and nickel and you know, magnesium, you know, by hand. In fact, I wrote a book, Clean Energy Exploitations. It was nominated for a Pulitzer Prize because it brings transparency to the fact that all the exotic minerals and metals are coming from developing countries that have no labor controls and no environmental controls. And there, there's a limitation of how far you can go. I, I've been asked if I would buy an EV. I said, definitely not. After writing this book, I know where the material is coming from. And I think it's unethical and immoral to drive an EV because I'm not willing to financially support the environmental degradation and humanity atrocities in China and Africa. I mean, Africa controls 90% of the cobalt. China controls 80% of the lithium. And it's, it's unethical and immoral. But our government, whoa, 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 our government providing incentives to provide, you know, buy your EV and tax breaks. I, I think it's hypocritical, unethical, and immoral because basically our government is saying China, Africa, continue exploiting the people they have yellow, brown, and black skin. Continue the environmental degradation on your land. We're going green. I think that is totally hypocritical. In fact, the picture, we debate a long time, but the picture on the cover of the book is in Africa with a military person holding an Uzi, overseeing a family, mining for the stuff by hand so we can go green. Joe Biden wants to get rid of oil. He's flying around in a 400-ton plane 100% made with oil. All the computers and insulation, the upholstery. It's powered by aviation fuel, which obviously comes from oil. And he's screaming in a microphone, we're going to get rid of oil. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, I guess the only good thing about getting rid of oil, you're ground Air Force One. <laughs> but there's no conversations. Uh, you know, take Joe Biden. He's got a lot of military generals reports to him. The Army, Navy, Marine, Air Force, the, the space program. Apparently not one general has asked the president, how are we going to run our ships and planes without fuel? And how are we going to provide the products to our troops without the oil derivatives that come out of oil? Wind and solar is not going to drive the planes. Wind and solar is not going to make you know, the equipment they wear. And so there, there's no conversations. That's... That, that could solve a lot of problems. Because like I say, there's no silver bullet answers. There's, there's opportunities for almost everything. But I, I keep thinking that we got six billion people in this world that are living like we did a couple hundred years ago. And the wealthy countries are getting further and further away from them. And so I'd, I'd like to have them enjoy the lifestyle we have. If you haven't checked out CaliforniaInsider.com, we highly recommend you do that now because we're going to have a lot of news and videos there. And on top of what we have there right now, we're building a really big platform to cover what's happening in California. So you can be informed. We're going to have more shows, more videos from all aspects of life in California. Go to CaliforniaInsider.com and we'll see you there.